So I believe that elections can determine, you can look at an election and you can look at who the people had voted for and that reflects the character of the people. Either the people that they voted for is just like them or it's who they wanted to be. So that's what people said about Trump and Obama. Obama is who we wanted to be, but Trump is actually who we are. <laughs> and um, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about Ike Lawrence. I found some more issues that he supports. So these are some more ideas that is, you know, this is the kind of governor that he would be. Well, upon reflection, I like that he wants the father inside the home. We do need to defend, you know, people laugh at the men's rights activists, and they are, you know, some of them are pretty misogynist, but men's rights activists that say that men deserve to have rights, that's common sense. That's common sense. So, 63-year-old um, Ike Lawrence, he says no to online gambling. So that's interesting. I think somebody's saying that we need to do gambling and marijuana to get our economy going. So Ike Lawrence, he's, uh, I want to talk about his policies, but I want to make one caveat real quick. I had said, okay, we're going to get to the bad parts about him. It's not, he's not bad himself. His policies, you know, he's got some bad policy ideas. And part of it is because he's conservative. So the, I just want to make that distinction. I want to be more precise with what I believe. He's a nice guy. Give him a call. He will talk to you. Talk to me out of the blue. So, uh, you know, so if you're willing, you know, if you're polite and you're nice and you say, hey, what do you think about this, he'll give you the time of day. So I would never see Ike Lawrence ever intentionally hurting somebody for a reason. So I just wanted to mention that I didn't think that his, you know, personality or his character was bad, but that his, you know, some of his policies are bad. So he believes in a photo ID to vote. Lawrence, Ike Lawrence believes minors accused of a violent crime should be prosecuted as an adult. So you can hit minors, but minors can't hit back, right? So, the, again, discipline. I need to know his distinction between discipline and child abuse. He believes in enforcement of national immigration law by local police. That's obviously okay. Thinks welfare recipients should pass a drug test before they collect. Should older folks take a drug test for their Social Security? So that's, you know, the studies say that it, you're actually losing money by doing that. He does not support an increase in the minimum wage. I think it's $7 an hour in Kentucky. In Colorado, it's $10 an hour. It's supposed to go up every so many years. So he doesn't support an increase in the minimum wage. It's bad economics, but you should have a livable wage. So when it comes to what's good economics, you know, if the job doesn't provide a livable wage, that job should be illegal. He believes in the enforcement of national immigration law. Oh, I already said that. Okay, so um, doesn't think the state of Kentucky should invest in solar, wind, or thermal heating. So I think it's probably a conservative part of him saying we don't need to spend money. The government doesn't need to be part of you know, develop these things. They can help. The government helps. We're all Keynesians now, so the government spends a shit ton of fucking money anyways. They're doing something with the economy. Those judges get $130,000, so not only do judges get a shit ton of power, but then the judges get to invest in businesses and land and just take all the property of Kentucky for themselves. So, the Kentucky should invest in solar, wind, thermal heating. Both Jeff Young and Adam Edelin are in favor of renewable energies and making it a big part of their uh, governorship, their administration. Government should regulate greenhouse gas emissions. So, that's interesting. He believes, he say, I think he thinks that climate change is a myth, which would be incorrect, but he says that government should regulate greenhouse gas emissions. Government should regulate greenhouse gas emissions. So he doesn't want pollution, right? He cares somewhat about the environment. He's talking about cleaning up the lakes and, you know, the streams. He's in favor of government funding for clean water drinking initiatives. That is such a great idea. Water is such a precious resource when you're out in the cold, windy desert. So, to have clean drinking water, he's for government funding for water, right? 
just not solar, wind, and thermal power. He generally supports gun control legislation. He told me he was Second Amendment. The, he did criticize people who had died by drugs and guns in Lexington. Oh, it's the safest. What, what about the 26 people that were shot to death? So it wasn't safe for them. He thinks background checks should be necessary at gun shows. So he's actually more liberal on guns than I am. Ike Lawrence is. He thinks teachers should have guns in the classroom. Okay, now he's more conservative on guns. <laughs> he thinks a person should have a license to own a gun. So now he's more liberal again. So he's actually, you know, he's got some liberal issues when it comes to guns. He thinks that gun control, he generally supports gun control legislation. He thinks background checks should be necessary at gun shows, because there's a whole gun show loophole. And he thinks person should have a license to own a gun. You just had that carry concealed bill passed by Matt Bevin. So Matt Bevin passes this bill saying that everybody could carry concealed before you had to get a license. Now everybody in Kentucky just could be hiding a gun. I like the idea. I'm for a Second Amendment, so... I haven't totally thought this completely through, but when you have guns and it's hiding, if you're a criminal and you don't know who's hiding a gun, well, that would be a good deterrent for a criminal. But the criminals could be hiding guns too, right? So you don't know if you're a law-abiding citizen who has a gun. So I like the idea of knowing who's got the gun. Have the gun outside your body, you know, have the gun clearly posted, clearly in a holster, clearly put away. So I like the idea of it being, you know, not concealed. I am surprised about Matt Bevin. The entire state of Kentucky did not collapse. <laughs> I was worried about the shock doctrine. You got a lot of problems with poverty and abuse and, you know, just a whole bunch of uh, meth and STDs, uh, homelessness, just uh, police and judge, prosecutorial corruption, lots, the most corrupt state in the union. The most corrupt state, not even a question, right? The number one, Harvard, Harvard University says Kentucky is the most corrupt state in the nation. So, you know, when it comes to, what was I saying? <laughs> um, when it comes to, they have a bunch of problems. I thought that Matt Bevin was going to get in the office and all that craziness all that insanity combined with dog-eat-dog -dog capitalism, just, you know, everybody do for themselves, just chase your own self-interest, your own greed, make sure your economics is taken care of, and, you know, fuck everybody else, just make sure you get your job, make sure you're getting paid. I thought that combination would actually make uh, Kentucky a powder keg, but it did not, uh, there wasn't a, but there was a school shooting in Marshall High School, but I haven't heard a bunch of stuff, you know, essentially about people going crazy. So I'm actually, uh, Matt Bevin didn't ruin everything. <laughs> and Matt Bevin, I'll say this about Matt Bevin, he's very personable, he's a very impressive politician, very good politician, that Robert Goforth, he ain't worth a damn when it comes to being a politician. He, you know, it could be an impressive man and accomplished and done this and done that. But he doesn't, he's not a showman. He's not a showman. He's not putting his policy planks out there. He don't, I don't think he's got a platform. Where is his platform at? Does he even have one? Matt Bevin, I had tweeted this to both Matt Bevin and Will, shit, not Rogers, Will, Will T. Scott. Damn it. But it was a very redneck hillbilly. Hey, y'all, I'm just here. I'm a good old boy. And I just want to, I just care so much. What you do to the least of my brethren, you do unto me. You do unto me. <laughs> so he's very Kentuckian, you know, with the accent, with the whole demeanor. And it was, you know, a good show. I actually enjoyed his campaign. But I tweeted to both of them, right? I tagged both of their names. And I was thought I was very clever when I did this. But I said, Matt Bevin and Will Scott are the exact opposite. Will Scott is a Kentuckian who is trying to be an intellectual, and Matt Bevin is an intellectual who is trying to be a Kentuckian. 
He had a Daniel Boone hat, you know, when he was a kid, he had a Daniel Boone hat when he was living up in New Hampshire, and then I, you know, tweeted, oh, I see you now, Kentucky boy, I see you now. I liked his ad when I said at KET that it looked like it was just a food fight between the Republicans. He ran an ad about a food fight for Republicans, so I felt like, I, I don't know if I planted that seed in his mind, and then he went ahead and ran a commercial, but he said he, I asked him about it, and I was like, that was I enjoyed that commercial. He says, I wanted to add some levity to the campaign. He was awesome at Fancy Farm. When he ran against Mitch McConnell, he goes, I'm not going to run to the left of you, Mitch. I'm not going to run to the right of you, Mitch McConnell. I'm going to run over you. And that was badass. Adam Edelin one-upped Matt Bevin at Fancy Farm, though. I don't... It's a tradition, but Matt Bevin kind of said this is an ugly tradition. So I don't know if they did that or not. I hope that they did. It would be awesome. I bet you, did Jeff Young, did he go to Fancy Farm? Because Fancy Farm, is, there's some value to Fancy There's a lot of value to Fancy Farm. You really get down to the nitty-gritty of who these people are. And so Matt Bevin was confident, and he was ready to run over Mitch McConnell, right? <laughs> and then Kentucky is so crazy and backwards and stupid. They went ahead and voted for Mitch McConnell anyways, right? He's a perennial candidate. Right, Mitch McConnell, a lot of these candidates are perennial candidates. If you're in office, though, you're not a perennial candidate. They're not going to you know, try to scapegoat you with that or put that label on you to disqualify you. But Adam Edelin, he had said that perhaps Matt Bevan needs to listen to the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so he was basically out christening. He's a bigger Christian than Matt Bevan. Matt Bevan's going to kick people off of health care. Matt Bevin's not a good Christian, not as good as Adam Edelin. So Adam Edelin had a good line at Fancy Farm. So I was just saying that a little bit about Matt Bevin because that's who Ike Lawrence is running against. Actually, they're all running against him eventually, right? But the Democrats are running against themselves, and then the Republicans are challenging Matt Bevin. He hasn't gone to any of the debates, so I don't think he has really the same moral high ground that he had when he first started. He's the least popular governor in the entire United States, but he even got booted, the Kentucky Derby, but the, there's only 13% of the population that votes, so who knows what those old folks will say. Matt Bevin is a very impressive politician. That Robert Goforth isn't worth a damn when it comes to showmanship, so when it comes to a good show, Matt Bevin puts on a good show. When he was sitting there walking around the halls of the Capitol, and he was like, where's the legislators at? <laughs> Where are they at? That was very effective, and it was very smart. I've been paying attention to the legislation. They passed 100, 200 laws ever since I've been a kid in Kentucky, so I assume they passed a shit ton of laws. And it's embarrassing that the media and even Wikipedia, there's not enough people that's actually talking about the issues. He's passed 100 laws this year. Do you agree with all the 100 laws that Matt Bevin passed? Do you even know what the laws are? Do you even give a shit what the laws are? Do you even pay attention to the law? <laughs> you just bullshit everybody. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, yeah, you can't do that. Oh, I would never do something like that. You know, the sensational So You would think that they pick up all the sensational stuff, but maybe they don't. You know, the, they're not the uh, smartest. They're not the brightest crown in the box. Fucking media. Fucking Kentucky media. So, he thinks teachers should have guns in the classroom. I think there should be... I don't know. I don't really want to say this. <laughs> there should be a police officer. They should have a police officer at the school. They have to do duty, you know, 24-7 anyways. That's where all of our kids are. Have a, you know, a, a police officer that's watching everybody and what's going on. But when you're a police officer and you got a gun, you're there to make sure, you know, that the kids don't get hurt. You're not there to bully the kids. So be friends with the kids. Do D.A.R.E. program, right? I think that would be good so you actually get to talk to the kids. But giving teachers, those fucking pricks, those assholes, those stuck-up elitist fucks a gun, okay, they probably would shoot themselves in the foot, right? They, if you don't know anything or if you can't do anything, then you teach. Those who can't do, teach. So, you, you know, they're not making something. They're not adding to the GDP. And 95% of the teachers I've had my entire life have been absolute dog shit. 
He does not support Medicaid expansion through Kentucky's health care programs. That's federal government money. That's free federal government money. It's there in the states that had denied Medicaid money and the people died for preventable health care reasons. They should be tried for uh, murder. They should be tried for murder. They could have prevented health care issues from killing these folks, but instead they said, no, we're not going to take the free money from the federal government because we're just a bunch of heartless pieces of shit, asshole sons of bitches. <coughs> and it's good all around. It's not just good for health care, but it's also good for, you know, the doctors and the hospitals. They get more money, so it's just good for the economy. All It's just good for everybody. But to be a conservative, you're supposed to, you know, hate health, which is life. And if you don't give a shit about life, then you don't give a shit about, you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Isn't that guaranteed in the Constitution or Declaration? I, I thought I read it somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy. So, he supports the Kevorkian Law. Ike Lawrence supports the Kevorkian Law. He thinks that if you're suffering and you want to be put to death, then you can be euthanized. And really, it's your life. It is your life. So they, Colorado just passed that. That was a initiative on the ballot, and the people of Colorado says, yes, you have a right to peacefully drift off into Netherland, into, you know, the, let the Sandman come, or whatever the old people say. So, you know, you're old, you're in pain, and you just don't want to live no more. He wants to keep religious exemptions for vaccinations for folks. So, you know, religion exemptions, you, you should be allowed to, you know, not get vaccinations if you don't want to. But vaccinations are good. He's pro-vaccination, which sort of shocked me. <laughs> um, yeah, so he doesn't support a statewide smoking ban, uh, which, right, freedom. So he supports the drugs that are already legal, right? He's all about nicotine and alcohol, even though... He makes the argument that drug dealers should get the death penalty. So that means if you have a, you know, legal drug company, a pharmacy, if you have uh, alcohol, you could sue Budweiser, right? Budweiser contributed to that person drinking and driving, and therefore you could sue Budweiser. But I don't think he would say that. He would just say that, you know, the drug dealers on the street, but not the drug dealers in the business, in the legitimate business. They won't get in trouble. So he doesn't support a statewide smoking ban. He believes gay folks shouldn't be discriminated against, which is impressive for a Republican. He, Matt Bevin said, oh, and then Bill Clinton, he went ahead and passed don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> That's not saying gays can be, you know, flamboyantly in the military, but if they want to quietly, you know, off to the side. And then the straight folks and the, the bigots, they can't ask, don't ask, don't tell. Right? So the whole relationship was just to keep it, the a lid on it. You're allowed to serve, keep a lid on it. Now, the, of course, gay folks should be allowed to serve in the military. Of course, they should be allowed to serve in the military. They're people, too, right? You put their lives on the line for our country. Like, why would you, uh, why would you ever stop, you know, anybody that would want to do that? Oh, you want to put your life on the line for all of us? Thank you. That's all we should say to gay folks who go join the military. So, Matt Bevin has some homophobic bigot, you know, some uh, leanings, some bigot, bigoted leanings. He says that it's okay for the gender, you know, for the LGBTQ, for the transgender to be discriminated against. So he says gay folks are okay, but he says transgendered are not. Neither one des deserve discrimination. One's weird, the surgical part, so they're just a science experiment, so they're just operating on themselves, and they're changing how they were born. If you feel like something differently, okay, fine, but I don't feel like I should pay for it, and I think it's very weird. I think it's very, very weird that you're going to go ahead and mangle your vagina into a penis or take your penis and then, you know, turn it into a vagina. I, I think that's very, very fucked up. If you want to be a cross-dresser, if you're a male that's very sensitive and you feel very girl-like, or you're a female that feels very manly, that's okay. I have no problem with those things. I have no problem with those things whatsoever. It's the surgical. Uh, you know, the surgical thing is sort of, that's, um, 
but you shouldn't be discriminated against. So even if you do some weird shit, right, people wear their hair weird, wear different clothes, goth people, people are weird, right? So if people want to be transgender, surgically and change themselves, then you shouldn't discriminate against them. You should serve them, you know, the same pizza. You should allow them to shop at Walmart, and you sh they get all the same political rights that everybody else does. So he seems to be anti-transgendered, and he's not worried about the pay gap for men and women, which, I, you know, I hear the 75 cents on the dollar thing, but I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's, you know, you can't pay men and women different wages unless it's a different job. If it's the exact same job, it's illegal. It's so illegal. We pass equal, you know, pay for men and women like 50 fucking times. I don't know how many times we could pass this law statewide, nationally. Colorado just passed it. Obama passed it. So how are people going to say, you know, be against, I don't know. I, I just, I guess, I don't have the data to back it up, but I believe I read that women are actually doing better than men. They're graduating more in college, and they're making more money uh, overall. So, you know, 75 cents to the dollar, is that including the home, the mothers? And so if they're just adding everybody's wages and then just comparing and contrast, well, then that's different jobs now, isn't it? So, yeah. I, if, if there is discrimination when it comes to pay, that should be prosecuted, that somebody should do something about it. If you're, you're being paid less for the exact same job, the exact same job, right? You're a cashier and you're, you know, pulling in money and you're a cashier, you're a man, woman, you're, it's the same. You should get the exact same pay. So that was just a couple more uh, of his policy points. He's got some interesting ideas. Uh, I, you know, it's, uh, he's a Republican, so I wouldn't even be able to vote for him if I was in Kentucky anyways. And I guarantee you that most Kentuckians, because Fox News isn't telling them who to vote for, they have no idea. They're just going to say Matt Bevin because he was already there, and he's the incumbent. One, uh, Matt Bevin is really short, so I don't see him becoming the president. But for Kentucky... I think he's put on a good face for Kentucky. I think he's put on a good professional, intelligent face for Kentucky. He's got, you know, his ego. He lost a bill. He's got the Republican supermajority in the House and I think the Senate. So he's got, you know, both houses. Matt Bevin could pass whatever goddamn law he wants to fucking pass. But apparently he pushed some kind of bill 94 to 0. So even his own Republican colleagues voted against this bill that he had pushed for. So it seems like Matt Bevin isn't getting along with the legislative branch. He should, you know, talk to the leadership. You only need to talk to two people, right? The president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House. Just talk to those two people, get along with them, and then uh, see what legislative things they want, and then talk about the ones you want, see where there's common ground, and then Matt Bevin can pass a shit ton of stuff. He's already passed a shit ton of stuff. So he's the Republican nation of Kentucky has happened because of Matt Bevin along with, you know, Mitch McConnell and all the other damn Republicans, but Mitch McConnell slowly brought in the Republican revolution for 30 years, and Mitch McConnell flipped the house and got a bunch of Republicans. It's usually the opposite. Once the Republican gets in, then the house goes Democrat because they want, you know, some balance. The people do. There's the reactionaries. The Democrats are pissed, so they go vote, and then the Republicans forget to vote, and then you know, the Democrats get to take about take the House back. That's what's happened in national politics, but it's not what happened in Kentucky. There are more Democrats in Kentucky than Republicans, and the Democrats have ran Kentucky for the last, uh, you know, in the last 70 years, 80%. So there's only been three one-term Republican governors in the last 70 years. But for 80%, ever since World War II, it's just been Democrat after Democrat after Democrat. So there is a long history of the Democrat you know, Party and Democrats running Kentucky, and there's more Democrats, so there's a lot of Democrats in Kentucky, too, so I think you shouldn't. They're the only ones that are voting, right? Just your Republicans and Democrats, so... In the general election, if you're a, you know, running as a Republican in the primary, all right, yeah, fuck those Dems, fuck those libs. If you're running as, a, you know, a Democrat in, um, 
the Democrat primary, then fuck those conservatives, fuck those Republicans. But you do got to pivot. You're not supposed to because you're supposed to be just one person, right? But that's just sort of the nature of the thing. You're running for the Democrats, so you have to appeal to the Democrats. Well, what do the Democrats want? You're Republican, you got to appeal to the Republicans. Well, what do the Republicans want? So there is some more policy ideas by a Republican gubernatorial candidate for 2019 primary, for, for the Republican primary. So John Masters, 